what is leadership for you? Oh, that's a very good question. And a simple answer would be, uh, we, I, I took this from, from uh, adapted this from John Maxwell. And, and he, he says that leadership is the ability to add value to others wow. who can turn around and multiply that value to other people. So if I'm able to add value to somebody, I want to make that somebody turn around and multiply that value to others. And, and that for me, that's leadership. And together with that ability to add value, I also believe in servant leadership or what we call steward leadership. And I, I also believe that uh, if you are able to serve others, that's where your greatness really comes as a leader. The better you serve others, the better your leadership comes out, especially yeah. when you have different people from different backgrounds mm -hmm. to be able to serve the common value, a common uh, goal together to move forward with synergy. What would you say would be the top three problems that they normally face? Yes, uh, I, I do believe, Marilyn, that in addition to the corporate leaders and, mm -hmm. and organization, uh, I've worked also with the government. Um, oh. if, if you're familiar with the Department of Public Works and Highways uh, yes, in I the Philippines, right <laughs> <laughs> um, we, uh, we are faced with a challenge. Uh, in 2009, uh, the, the survey showed in Asia Pulse Asia that, uh, that the DPWH, the Department of Public Works, was one of the most corrupt wow. and, and, um, corrupt agency. In, in mm -hmm. the Philippines. And mm -hmm. in 2014, uh, when I came to the Philippines after my stint in uh, Singapore as a uh, master's in public administration, I was asked to help out in the value formation. Mm -hmm. And for me, negative thoughts start coming. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this won't happen. It won't be possible. And then that in a way challenged my mindset. Of how can I change my mindset? Because if in my inner game, I'm already losing, I've lost the battle. True. So applying the principle of shifting from a negative mindset, taking myself into account, meditating, and, and using the principles of clear vision, I began to experience myself, what would it be like if people live a life of integrity, of transparency, of accountability, and take on the negative emotion of anxiety, uncertainty, to a more clarity in communicating to others the value of integrity. So in 2014, together with the leadership of Rogelio Singson, uh, he, he's one of my uh, models of uh, government leadership, mm -hmm. and uh, you might be hearing about him. Together with him and some members of the team, we were able to change from 2014 to 2016 the mindset of the people working in DPWH from a negative corrupt perspective to a more uh, integrity transparency and of service to the public it turned around because in 2016 uh, the Philippines uh, headed by Pinoy Aquino recognized the transition the transformation that happened mm -hmm. in 2014 uh, actually 2009 2014 mm -hmm. and 2016 the transition from a most corrupt agency to the most well-governed agency in the Philippines in 2016. Wow. So I, I, I do believe the power of shifting the mindset with the leaders on top and with the team and community working together, it can happen. So I, I do believe the importance of uh, the inner game, transforming our minds from negative to positive and having a community to create an environment, a culture, of transparency, of excellence, and moving forward together. Mm -hmm. So th that that story in alone was, was an inspiring thing for me. So I, I shared this also to the corporate world and for, for them to be able to shift from a negative mindset. And I discovered that even in their own personal lives, uh, aside from the corporate boardroom, they mm -hmm. also have negative thoughts in terms of their families, their loved ones, uh, th their negative thoughts uh, tend to create a lot of doubts, a lot of hatred, a lot of mm -hmm. anxiety and stress. A and I began to see, oh, it's common w wherever you are, whether in the government, in the corporate, everybody experiences a negative mindset. 
And it's our challenge to shift that to a more positive mindset and bring about change in society, which begins from our inner self. What would you say would be the important leadership um, capabilities and skills that they must have in the next normal to continue to lead effectively? I believe I believe that you've mentioned a few already um, earlier. So, but if there's anything that you'd like to add, or if you'd like to summarize, like mm-hmm. uh, this, this capabilities and skill, please uh, do so. Yes, I think in the year, er, there are so many skills that can be used. So mm-hmm. we are applying the VUCA uh, mm-hmm. with better vision. If you're able to see clearly, even amidst the volatile world, and mm-hmm. to see why you are there, why are you in, in, in business, why are you in the government, and to see the purpose and meaning, it, mm-hmm. it gives clarity to why you're there. And mm-hmm. the, the power of why uh, creates your vision to be more crystal clear. So that, that skill is a, a very important thing to do. The other skill is to be able to develop your, your competence. So, so the, the competence of applying your thoughts and then using those thoughts in day-to-day situations. Mm-hmm. So how, how would you translate that in financial terms? How would you translate that in materials that you're going to use for your production? How do you translate that to your HR? And how do you translate that in legal matters? So mm-hmm. th- those are the, the skills. And if you realize that not everybody has all the skills, <laughs> that's where the competency is more of being aware of what are needed in the situation. Mm-hmm. And as a, as a CEO or as a COO, you will be able to understand that there are different factors or different facets of a project. Mm-hmm. And that's why the importance of culture and community we're in the silo, I think the, the silo mentality, uh, especially in government, they Very think common. about departments and they don't think about the common good. Uh, I, I, I really see the value of the, the Singaporeans when I was there to see the value of the whole nation as, a, as one. They're not close to each other. They share the, their ideas, they share the expertise, and they build a culture of community that would really build up excellence among them. And they reward excellence for that. So and, I think, and I, we, yeah. Sorry, sorry. And I believe that's kind of common to most organization, whether government or private and public, right? Um, there's always silos because I think like not a lot of people would um, see the big, the bigger picture, or otherwise, um, like oh, they're so focused on oh, this is my task, this is my role, um, without really like. Um, understanding like oh okay this role actually um is is contributing to um mm-hmm. the whole uh vision the whole uh goal and the whole um you know um when you're back of the house you you sell them like meat with clients and yet the experience that i mean i'm a hotelier by profession and training so i i'm giving that as an example right when, you, mm-hmm. when you're back with, uh, at the back of the house like doing housekeeping and all those stuff so you don't really get to have a, a contact with your customer right mm-hmm. but then at the same time the experience of the what you have done or what you do in your role actually has a great impact in the experience that you actually provide to your clients, right? So yes. sorry to cut you there. And, yes. <laughs> and you're yeah, that's right, because the hotel is a very important industry of service. Mm-hmm. And, and most people only see the, the front end, not yes. realizing that the secret of the good front end, it's a good back end. And, True. <laughs> and, and, and as people have a good back end, they create a better service to others. Exactly. Right. <laughs> and it's so applicable sorry. even to other industries, not just for the hotel. Yeah. It's also exactly. applicable in, in IT, in, in the government, because some people only see the what's in the news, you know? right. they don't under they don't see what's happening behind the scenes in the offices, exactly. working their butts off to fulfill a particular project. Yes, so. yes, because the whole experience is dependent on the entire like ecosystem within the organization, right? Yes, that's yeah. right. So I think I've missed like your third one. You've mentioned the first is, of course, starting with your why or your purpose. Um, second one is, of course, what we both um, like uh, inspire our customers to do is developing their competencies. And yeah. the last one is 
building community. So it's still, again, the three Cs, the importance of character, competence, and community. If you believe that uh, it takes a village to raise up a child, like mm -hmm. me, a Boy Scout, the, <laughs> it, it takes a community to raise up good for corporations and a good government. Mm -hmm. So if we take responsibilities from all walks of life and we are able to build up on each other, it creates a better culture of excellence, service, integrity, and all those values that really comes in from your character, from your competence, and from mm -hmm. your culture as a community. So community building is really important. So conflict management, communication, and how to listen is also another mm -hmm. skill that is important. That's why I, I'm into coaching. Uh, mm -hmm. Many of the executives I coach, uh, interestingly enough, listening is one of their uh, soft spot that uh, <laughs> they want to develop. They're used to speaking and telling people what to do. And to yes. listen is one of their challenging points. True. And I think that's a challenge for most people. And I'm really grateful that I get to discover about this clubhouse, right? Where you have to listen because nobody can listen to anyone if everybody's speaking, right? <laughs> because Perfect. it's an audio-only application. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, it really like uh, reminded us. I think it was only uh, built during the, the uh, pandemic as well. And that's really a good reminder for us how we need. And part of communication is actually listening, right? That's right, yes. And as yeah. we listen, uh, what I learned also in positive intelligence Mm -hmm. It's not just to listen for the data or information. Mm -hmm. yes. It's also good to listen for the energy, for yes. the emotions, yes. for, for the experience of the person while right. talking or communicating yes. with that person. The so, nonverbal. <laughs> yeah, yes. Which and is and of the course... inner game of the person. What's, right. what's going on with the mind of the person that you're talking yes. to? Yeah. Although it's not easy online, but there's a way. Um, especially yes. if you, you really learn and you really know how to communicate or listen to others. But in person, of course, it's, it's easier to do so, right? Um